so this is my pet crayfish. His name is Ravioli, and like every good pet owner, I want the best for him, but the problem with owning a crayfish is there's actually not a lot of information out there about them. So I've had Ravioli for a while, and I've learned a lot from him, and I figured I'd make a video for beginner crawfish owners um, to help you guys take care of your crawfish. First and foremost, you want to start with tank requirements. You have to get all of these down because they're very specific and they will actually try and escape your tank if the requirements are not right. So for a while, I didn't have an aerator in the tank, which you're going to need one of these. And every night he would try and escape and I'd hear him jump out the water and sometimes he would hit the lid of my tank and it would make bonk sounds. And since he's nocturnal, that wasn't, that wasn't really fun for me at night. He'd keep me up at night until I got that aerator for him. So they're persistent and you got to deal with that. For tank size, a good rule is for every inch of crayfish, you should multiply that by five and that is the tank size that you need. So if you've got a five inch crayfish, then you're gonna want like a 20 gallon tank. I personally, I have ravioli in a 60 gallon because I'm just cool like that and I give him a cool house and you should always give your pets the best that you can give them. For water temperature, you're not really gonna need a heater for these guys. They don't really need a heater. They're used to cold water. They can withstand pretty cold waters because they live for two to eight years and in their natural environment, um, that's going to be at least two winters. And so, yeah, they survive that, which means they're used to being cold. So if you've got no heater in your tank, that's completely fine. With decorations, you want to make it look as natural as possible. You want to have rocks and logs and sand or dirt substrate and lots of plants, like lots of plants. If you put like purple substrate or blue plants in your tank, then I am coming to your house and I am putting breadcrumbs in your bed and you will not be able to sleep because there will be so many breadcrumbs in your bed. And that's what happens when you put purple freaking plants in your tank. With water pH, um, you wanna have a neutral or alkaline for them. Uh, most people, what I've read is neutral, but crawfish usually live with like sandy substrate in the wild and anything with sand in it is just gonna, that sand raises the pH. So he's thriving, he's doing fine. Don't listen to those. The only thing you don't want is for it to get acidic. But neutral and alkaline is fine. If, if it's too alkaline, if he's not doing good or he's trying to escape, then logs, and this is an actual real wood, the plants are fake, but um, real wood and plants will get your pH down. For tank mates, you gotta be careful with this one because this is gonna depend on the personality of your crawfish and the personality of your fish. So if you have fish that are bottom dwellers, I don't recommend it because these guys are bottom dwellers and usually they're aggressive. Ravioli surprisingly is not aggressive. He's a very good boy, but you gotta be careful with that anyway. If he's super aggressive, I wouldn't put any fish in there with him at all. But if he's, if he's a good boy or girl, um, if they're a good crayfish, then maybe you can put some fish in there. But as long as the fish aren't gonna like nip at him and be like, wow, this is gonna be a cool thing to try and eat and then they're gonna get mauled. Or the other thing that will happen, this happened to a friend of mine, if the fish are big enough or if you've got a lot of fish, they'll just keep picking on him and then he'll die, which is not good. You do not want that happening. You don't want your fish dying. You don't want your crawfish dying. You don't want dying. It's not recommended that you put other crayfish in there. If um, you do, it has to be the same species and it has to be significantly smaller than your, your main crayfish. So I actually have a baby in here. His name's Mozzarella. He's back there. Yeah, Mozzarella's good and doesn't bother ravioli. For their diet, think of them like a baby. They will eat anything as long as it is soft enough for them to chew. So if you've got like rotting lettuce in your fridge, don't throw it out. Get a little piece for him and put it in his tank because he's gonna love that. That's gonna be like a nice treat for him. You can also get them foods like these. I give him crab cuisine and I give him these little shrimp pellets. Honestly, I like the crab cuisine better because it's pretty small and it's small enough for him to grip onto and eat. He doesn't use these claws to eat. He uses these smaller ones, so smaller food is better. Also, when they molt, leave their molted shell in the tank because they're gonna be very weak and they're gonna eat their shell to get their strength back. So you need to leave it in there for them. So my favorite part of having a crayfish is you can actually 
play with them. Like, I call him a dog a lot, like, jokingly, because he's a crayfish, and I'm like, hey guys, want to see my pet dog? And I send him a crayfish. Like I said, crayfish aren't popular pets, so it's, it's kind of funny when I do that. But they're surprisingly playful, and I'm going to tell you guys some games that I've heard about for crayfish, and some games that I actually play with mine. And remember to play with them at night or in the evening, because they're nocturnal. They're going to be awake at night. Don't wake them up during the day. And side note, make sure you turn their lights off at night. Make sure you do that. If you don't, I'm putting double the amount of breadcrumbs in your bed, and you will not like that, I promise you. And one more thing before I start, I'm pretty sure I forgot to mention this. You have to have a little thing for them to hide in. I have a little cave rock thing. I call this his room, and this is his front yard, okay? You have to have one of these. No exceptions. I'm putting, like, all kinds of garbage in your bed if you don't have one of these for your crawfish. So one of the things I've seen people do is put food, like a little piece of chicken, for example, on a string and drag it through the tank and the crawfish will go and eat it and chase after it and they like to do that. One of the things I'll do with mine is I'll actually pet him and I'll either do it with my finger um, if he doesn't want to kill me or I will do it with this toothbrush which normally I use to clean the tank. I'll just kind of scrub the side of the tank but he actually likes it when I scratch him like this with the toothbrush. Speaking of the toothbrush, he also likes to chase it around. I'll put it in the tank and he'll just kind of chase it around. I'll move it like this and he likes to crunch at it. I don't know what you'd call that. He tries to grab it. It's funny. The other thing I've done, which you have to have a level of trust with these guys to do this because they're kind of skittish and it doesn't work with me every time. But I'll stick my hand in the tank and he's actually crawled up on top of my hand, which then he ended up crawling up my arm and onto my shoulder and I went up to my dad and I was like, hey dad, do you like my pet dog? And it, that was just a funny experience. I've only got him to do that once, crawl up my arm. I actually didn't get him to do it, he just did it himself. But yeah, that was a fun experience and sometimes they'll crawl into your hands, but I suggest just petting them and it's good to not take them out of the water. Also, if you take them out of the water, their gills have to be wet at all times. So if you're if they're gonna be out for a while, like maybe five minutes at the most is what you should do. Every minute or so, like spray them with a spray bottle, just a light mist water, but make sure the water is dechlorinated. I'm gonna drop some food in here and see if he comes out. There's Jotaro chasing it. Thank you, Jotaro. They have little antennae that they got. Whoa, that just dropped right into his claw. They have little um, antennas that they will use um, to sense food. They're like my apple snails. My snails do that too, but when you put food in the tank, a lot of times they'll come out, which is why you should feed them during the night or the evening, because that will also disrupt their, their sleeping during the day. It's like when you wake up in the morning because you smell bacon. It's exactly like that. He's peeking out. So yeah, uh, that's all for now. Um, I'm just going to record ravioli eating a little bit more because I want to show you guys how they eat. And also, I want to tell you guys how to tell their gender. Um, he's he's kind of stuck. So the way you tell their gender, you kind of have to pick them up to do it. Males will have four little legs, it looks like, at, on their stomach. And there he is eating. Um, he's taking those little legs right there, and he's putting food into his mouth. You can kind of see his, they're like little legs that go really, really fast and put food in his mouth. And that's how he eats. So that's all for today. Remember, big tank, lots of plants, lots of natural decorations. Make sure you got all the food, the good food. Mine likes hot dogs, so maybe you can give yours a hot dog, but obviously without the bun and the ketchup and all that stuff, they just like the meat. Uh, so yeah, stay cool.